again. All righty. There we go. All righty. So Shabbat Shalom to everybody here on Zoom and those on YouTube. I'm just doing a recording right now uh, due to some technical difficulties on YouTube. But nonetheless, Yah's word will go forth. And uh, let it be a blessing to us on today. So uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and Toda, everybody that's on right now. So let's get right into it so we don't delay too much longer. Let me know if you guys see the screen. Yes, we see it. Yes. Toda. Yes. All righty, there we go. Let's put this up here. Okay, so we are back with Ezekiel. It's been a, a full circle as y'all has uh, given to us. Um, and we just want to go along with what y'all saying. Um, and so all of us have been saying tonight, just make sure that we are trying to uh, walk according to y'all's word, obedience, and even just hearing y'all. We want to hear y'all in this time, you know, um, it's not so much about hearing me. It's not a much, so much about hearing what's going on in the world more so, but it's more so about what is Yah saying in his word. His word is true and it must be fulfilled. And so it's, it's, it's serious. I mean, if we haven't been serious since, since the time we begin to really turn and, and turn back on this narrow path, it's, it's given even more narrow and it's hard pressed, as Mashiach said. Don't go on a broad road, stay on a narrow road. Few be that find it. And it's easy for me to just, like I said, always bring uh, a message. But sometimes when y'all pressing on us, we have to obey even the more because we'll be held accountable. And that's something that as we in Ezekiel in itself, Ezekiel had that same pressing on him. Um, all of the Navi had that pressing on them. All of y'all's children had that pressing on them to to hear and hearken to y'all's voice because in that time, as uh, I think Kayla, when she brought about when she was on um, Wednesday uh, Torah study with uh, Ben Ephraim and was talking about the first command is to not put anything before him, and how serious that is as the first commandment, the same way y'all's places his word because he places his word above his name. So even to the point where his word would not return into him void. And so when we look at this part and coming back to Ezekiel, make sure we're hearing Yah, because nothing is new under the sun. We're going to continue to say that. And as we know, it's nothing new under the sun. What was shall be again. Uh, Akihusha just said something uh, very vital, saying that uh, Yah is going to do what he's going to do. Yah doesn't change, but we should be changed into the newness of our lives to be walking in, in integrity with Yah, but also that we do not be like our forefathers, the ones that went against Yah. And I obeyed him. And so in, Tze in this Ezekiel, uh, we are in chapter 20. Um, for those that have been uh, maybe looking at the series that we've been doing in, in Ezekiel. And as Yah leads, this is all about Yah. This is all about what Yah is bringing forth because we know that his word must be fulfilled. And so anytime we look at the word, let us study and examine together. And as I always say, it's open for us to discuss back and forth why was we going, as we're going through this because that's how we edify each other in this time. As we see the days drawing near, Edify each other in the word, continue to edify each other in the word, and Yah's word is true. All right. So um, today is uh, Ezekiel, um, where it, we have it is written. All right. It is written. So we're going to deal with that, and we're just going to go through the word as well um, and praise Yah. So we're going to start with a voda. Um, I have a few videos, very, I would say, Eye opening as well. I've shared them probably before, but it's been some time since I shared uh, a few of these videos. But I want to I share it again because, like I said, y'all speaking to his children. He's allowing us to use our gifts, our talents to to bring out it is what his word is. But at the same time, he's given us this discernment in this time. And if he gives you something, be obedient to it. You know, make sure you understand whatever the call that y'all has. It could be something simple to us, but it's big to y'all. But it all plays a part. As we all just shared our Pesach um, experience, it all shares a part. And all we can do is edify each other in this time, in the midst of all those things. Because whether it's good or bad, Abiyah still on, uh, 
I'll be y'all still in control. And that's what we have to remember. Y'all's in control of everything. And so we praise y'all for that because he is true to his word and we're going to continue to give him worship despite of. So let's get into some avoda and hallelujah. So let me get that going here and get the avoda going. the mind of sane people and I suspect that all of us in here are sane it is unthinkable that somebody would plan to kill an entire people see you couldn't think like that but don't you think that others don't think like that we're sick and tired of being abused. We're sick and tired of living in fear. We're sick and tired of being manipulated. We ain't gonna do it no more. Them kill our profits every time then. Try and get us. You know, the nice and big blonde them. Tell me what's the purpose. Really?
station Prepare for them food shortage Ask for them sea bank storage Social media, what a distraction with them demonic forces Tell me who them sources What's the ingredients of them sources Give your prime ministers and religious leaders Find out who them bosses Oh, them full of folly oh. Now make the one percent them the PO Tell your elect for your cast elect Watch the options them keep giving you Who get the contracts, the one with contacts Poor people get less money with more tax Open oh, your eyes and see Who are the real enemies For me they are in this jungle still Some rich and I suffer still All the money with them have that Can't buy salvation But they are in this jungle Out for the battlefield Oh, yeah, no Man fed up with oppression So I've got to take myself away What control we mentally Make microchip enter it Stop your income when your food done You're going to give in eventually Remember prayer without works is dead God help those who help themselves Not put them faith in our riches and wealth Ignore them health and still end up in a hell Man turn to the skeleton Jezebel So the man go marrow, enough of them blind follow See them today, you know see them tomorrow Pastors extract in the masses Politicians knocking champagne glasses And one like the smarties To them have them passes The people are go perish for lack of knowledge Come in the year in this jungle still Some rich and I suffer still All the money with them have that Can't buy salvation I'm the in this jungle Out for the battlefield Oh, yeah, no Man fed up with oppression Man stand down for me, I'm a no Man a call for me, I'm a no Got to detach from the system Self-sufficient man for me For them food shortage, ask about them sea bank storage, social media, what a distraction with them demonic forces. Now that pitch in the stands, that's home 
front, but running home feel like I'm running this sand. The world is ending, you can see the vision all on the ground. I step back, the spirit will let me know in advance. The devil's raining, but the spirit will let me know when it ends. Most higher, could have gave me fire, but he gave me chance. Was a liar, me and my sin would often hold hands. Watching the wire, I see the life of my friends. Flame under a jar of cocaine, water in frying pan. Where it became flesh, flesh, and it's the light of man. Ghetto boy, went from a snap to a royal diet dam. All my brothers running the trap, we still a hired hand. Paper can't beat me back in, don't ever try again. Illuminati got your mind, soul, and body. They kill you and celebrate their gangsters like John Gotti. These wicked cops need to be charged with armed robbery. Felonious homicide for catching body at the body at the body. Sunnis and Israeli head raps, we look like Saudis. No Islam, we from the land of Abraham and Isaac. They see our heads and try to red dot it. Scholars know the truth, but try to hide it. I'm done with thinking Coptic, trauma behind my optics. When I read the Gospels, the consensus is synoptic. When I think of the apostles, I know they were philanthropic. When I think about the church, the way of Christ was not adopted. They support the beast system. When these beasts I teach with them, on my feet I stand firm. Liberty can't proceed with them. God's grace, it can't be earned. This ain't no elitism. This is so that we don't burn following worldly tradition. I keep my eye on heaven. I keep my eye on y'all. Me and the devil will always be at odds. And I left all that money in the streets. Knowing that his blessing will increase if I obey in the belly of the beast. 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 Hallelujah. May we keep our eye on Yah. Thanks for God. May we keep our eye on Yah. All right, let's get into this prayer. Just a second. As we go into uh, Tefillah prayer, um, as we all just shared during our time of reflection of the last few weeks or just even today, let us be reminded that the only reason why we are still here and the reason why we are still alive is because of Abba Yah. He continues to sustain us and keep us. So let us all be reminded of that as we go into this prayer, as we as we seek in all, after Abba Yah's presence, and we pray that Yah and His presence remain with us. Let Him not take His rock from us, the life, the essence of Him, the breath. Let us remain in Him. Let us stay steadfast. Let us be watchful. And let us be discerning of the times in which we are living. Because our Yah has already given us the things before they happen. So let us be his children, living and walking in obedience. I'm going to read a few scriptures in uh, 
Tehillim Psalms 37 as we progress in this prayer. Do not fret because of the evildoers. Do not be envious of the workers of unrighteousness. For they soon wither like grass and fade like plants. Trust in Yahuwah and do good. Dwell in the earth and feed on steadfastness and delight yourself in Yahuwah and let him give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahuwah, trust in him, and he does it. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your right, and your right ruling at midday. Rest in Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways because of the man doing wicked d devices. He abstains or abstain from the displeasure and forsake wrath. Do not fret also to do evil. For evildoers are cut off, but those who wait on Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. Yet a little while the wrong is no more. And you shall look on his face or his place, but it is not. But the meek ones shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in plenty of peace. The wrong plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. Yahuwah laughed at them, for he sees that his day is coming. The wrong have drawn <clears throat> the wrong have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cause the poor and the needy to fall to slay those who walk straightly their sword does enter into their own heart and their bow are broken better is a little of the righteous one than the riches of many wrongdoers for the arms of the wrongdoers are broken but Yahuwah sustains the righteous. Yahuwah knows the days of the perfect and their inheritance is forever. Abiyah, Yah, we ask that you bless this word on today. We ask that you come into all of our hearts. And if we, if any of us have any bitterness or anger in us, Abiyah, Yah, that you continue to read out the leaven or anything that may be in us, Abiyah. Yah. Let us be righteous, even to the time of trial, as we shared in our reflection. If a Mashiach, our Messiah, took on all the infirmities and all the things and all of our sins that we have bore on him, and still yet he sinned not, let us also walk in that same likeness. Let us not be like Kepha, but let us be like Mashiach. Let us know when it is the time. It is a time and a season for everything under the sun. But in the season that we're living in now, Abiyah, yeah, you tell us to use wisdom. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Let us use wisdom. Let us not fall into the trap of the wicked one to try to pull us into their snares, to cause us to stay in bondage to this system. Anything that'll get us to go against your word, let us use the wisdom that you've given to us in your word, Abba Yah. And we thank you. We pray for those that are sick, that are going through, Abba Yah. We pray for those that are going through surgery or anything, illness that they may be dealing with, Abba Yah. That you will give us your virtue, your power, your shalom, and healing power that you have given to even those that went before us. Because we're in the time now, Abba Yah with the gifts that you're giving us that we will be able to do as you called us to do, to lay hand on the sick and that they recover. Give sight to the blind and, and to pray for those that are without you, that they will turn to you and come back to you with the newness of heart and that you will give them eternal life through your son, Yahusha. We thank you, Abba Yah, for everything you've done for us. So let us walk in obedience as we go into your word, Abba Yah, for we know it is written and everything that's written must come to pass. Let us be on the right side of your word as we fulfill the scriptures and walk in orderly in your word. 
because all will bow their knee. All will confess. So let us honor you while we yet have breath in our bodies. But we not know what tomorrow brings, but today let us harden out our heart. Let us hear your word. And we ask all these things in your son, Yahushua Mashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All righty, Mishpaka. So uh, let me see if I can get this just a second. All righty. So let's get our Hatorah in and then we're going to get right into the word. Hatorah, Hatorah, we namur aksha. Whereby shall we return unto thee, Yahuwah, for thy words to be fulfilled? By your Torah, by your Torah. Yahuwah in our minds and in our heart is to be instilled. Hatorah, Hatorah, we namur aksha. How can we draw closer to each other in the Ruach of true righteousness? By thy Torah, by thy Torah. Yahuwah through your son, Yahusha. Yah is salvation. The Torah come flesh is the way. Hatorah, Hatorah, we namur aksha. All right, so our Torah parsha for today is Shemini, right? Shemini, um, which most of us know what that is. Uh, we're going to do a portion of the portion. We're just going to read through chapter 9. When you get a chance, read through chapter 9 and chapter 11, all the way to verse 47, because you'll learn about even the dietary uh, laws that Yah has in his word. And these things are all important because we are the temples of Yah. We have to remember that. He has, he has cleansed us. He has washed us with the blood so that we can, that his spirit, his rock can dwell in us. So his temple must be pure. It's a both natural and spiritual thing that Abiyah is doing with us in these last days. But he wants us to be pure for him. And that's what we will learn even in this particular part of the Parsha about Aaron and his sons and those that did not purify themselves according to Yah's word and they were cut off. We must hear Yah's voice. We must obey Yah's voice because yet yeah, Yah's word is true and we're not returning to void. So as we go into this, we're going into Shemini. All right. So many of you guys are familiar with that. Um, when you get a chance, please read through even the prophets. We have Second Samuel and even uh, Matt Yahoo, which is Matthew, uh, when you get a chance to just to reflect on Yah's word for today. So praise Yah. All right. So the Torah Parsha, I'm going to start here. Um, Kayla, I don't know if you um, are available to read. If not, I'll, I'll read um, some of this as well because we got, we got a bit of reading today that we're going to be doing. But I just want to make sure that as we read through this, like I said, uh, feel free to ask questions, to interject, because this is how we edify and bring forth the word of Yah for us all collectively as a whole. All right. So um, I'm going to begin here and start reading this uh, for the Torah Parsha, the Parsha of the Parsha. Um, but Shemini is eighth or eight all right it also deals with new beginnings all right and so we are in what we call a uh, new year uh we see the everything blossoming outside it's a beautiful day today as well so when you get some ch chance after shabbat go out and take a walk just give y'all praise and just uh thank him for yet again another day he's given us a beautiful day at that um and all days are beautiful but when you got the weather it it, it um, also encourages us to get outside more as well. All right. So let's begin here. And on the eighth day, it came to be that Moshe called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, take for yourselves a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as an ascending offering, a perfect one, and bring them before Yahuwah. And speak to the children of Israel, saying, take a male goat as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both a year old, perfect, perfect ones, as as an ascendant offering and a and a bull and a ram as a peace offering, to slaughter before Yahuwah, and a grain offering mixed with the oil. For today Yahuwah shall appear to you. And and they took what Moshe commanded before the tent of appointment, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahuwah.
And Moshe said, this is the word of Yahuwah commanded you to do, commanded you to do so that the, the esteem of Yahuwah appears to you. And Moshe said to Aaron, go to the slaughter place and prepare your, your offering, your sin offering and your ascending offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people and make the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as Yahuwah has commanded. So Aaron came near to the slaughter place and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the, and the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the slaughter place and poured the blood at the base of the slaughter place. And the fat and the kidney and the, and the appendix on the liver of the sin offering, <clears throat> hold on, appendix on the liver of the sin offering. And he burned on the slaughter place as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And the, and the flesh and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. And he slew the sin offering and the sons of Aaron presented to him the blood which he sprinkled on the slaughter place all around. And they presented the ascending offering to him with, with his piece and head, with his pieces and head. And he, he burned them on the slaughter place and he washed the entrails and the legs and burned them with the ascending offering on the slaughter place. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was, was, which was the sin offering for the people and slew it and made it a sin offering like the first one. And he brought the sin offering and made it according to the right rulings. He also brought the, the grain offering and, and filled his hand with it and burned it on the slaughter place beside the sin offering of the morning. And then he slew the bull and the ram as a slaughtering, as a peace offering, as a peace offerings, which were for the people. And Aaron's son presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled on the slaughter place all around. And the fat from the bull and the ram, the fat tail and the covering and the kidneys and the pendant and on the liver. And, and they placed the fat on the, on, the, on the breast and burned the fat on the slaughter place. But the breast and the right Right thigh Aaron waved as a wave offering before Yahuwah, as Moshe had commanded. Aaron then lifted up his hand toward the people and, the, and blessed them and came down from making the sin offering and the, and the sin offering and the peace offerings. And Moshe and Aaron went into the tent of appointment and came out and blessed the people and the esteem of Yahuwah appeared to all the people, and the fire came out of the, out before Yahuwah, and it consumed the ascending offering and the fat on the slaughter place. And all the people saw and cried aloud and fell on their faces. So that is a portion of the portion. Um, if anybody have any questions about what we just read, uh, if they're trying to understand um, how does this portray how we how we deal with this particular um, chapter itself today. Uh, feel free to open your um, your mics um, and ask questions. Like I said, this is the inter interchanging part right here. If you want to ask questions or anything we just read, feel free to ask. If not, I will continue uh, with the slides. All righty. Let's continue. So our text of the day, um, I was going to read through this whole particular uh, chapter, but um, for the sake of time, I wanted to make sure that what I put on the, on the um, slides here, that um, we really hear what's being said here. Um, it's never too much times where we can read God's word over and over again, and he continued to reveal and reveal and reveal. And so in this instance, as I was reading it, I said, oh man, yeah, this is a beautiful text that we can bring for the day. And I hope that it blesses everybody that hears it. Um, it goes as this, so yes, Yahu or Isaiah 43, uh, this is verse one to five here. But now, thus said Yahuwah, 
your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name. You are mine. Oh, yeah, let somebody in. You are mine. When you when you pass through the waters, I am with you. And through the rivers, they do not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you are not scorched, and a flame does not burn you. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim the set apart one of Israel, your savior. I gave Misraim for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my eyes, you have been esteemed and I have loved you. And I, have, and I, and I give men in your place and peoples for your life. Do not fear for I am with you. I shall bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I shall say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, all those who are called by my name, whom I have created, formed, even made from my esteem. He shall bring out a blind people who have eyes, and a deaf ones who have ears. All the nations shall be assembled, and the peoples be gathered, who, who among them declares this, and sh show us former events. Let them give their witnesses to be declared right, or let them hear and say, it is true. This is significant. We talked about a week or so, uh, maybe uh, two weeks ago, we was talking about um, examining the scriptures and um, about Mystery Babylon. This all come full circle as we even read this particular scripture, this text of the day here. I want us to understand this. Yah continues to tell us, do not fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but a sound mind. But he's even telling the nations to give a report. He also said that we are his witnesses. We are his servants. So as we speak Yah's word, and he's even made the heavens and the earth as a witness against us. This is why we have to be in line of Yah's word, because as we speak his word, he said it did not return unto him void. So all we're doing is rehearsing. When we speak his word, it's like a prayer. He hears his, he hears his own words and he acts on them because he is Yah. He keeps his promises. So we must remember that. And as I said before, no matter what we're going through as a people, remember the promises of Abba Yah. He keeps them. And he's showing us even today as we see things are happening in the earth, Yah keeps his word. But we must stay faithful as well. We must not waver. We must not have fear. All right. So let's get into this. Ezekiel, it is written. Let's get into this. It is written. But he answered, said, it has been written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. It is written. It is written. Hamashiach said this, quoting the words of Abba Yah, even being tried and tempted by Hasatan, he said, is written. We must begin to say what is written. And then when we say these things, what is written, we must believe it. His word must be in our hearts. And the more his word is in our heart, it's going to come out of our mouth because the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let his word be in our heart. Let his, let his ways be in our mind. Let us take on the mind of Mashiach. Because when we're in these times and trials, we must say what is written. Even when we're tempted, it is written. Let's continue. And he's quoting that from Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
And I want us to remind us of, of this because it's some things that we said shared earlier, but we re continue to be reminded continuously because y'all showing us that nothing is new. So he should continue to remind us to his word and it's continuous this cycle. But y'all cycle is perfect. Our cycle is sin. So choose today what you're going to do. And that's what y'all gave it to us. And he showed us in his word. So when we hear this, it's preparing us for y'all's wilderness for us. Whether we march us or whether or not, y'all's preparing us because he showed our forefathers. And as Akihusha shared, uh, I want to reiterate again. Let us not be as our forefathers were, the ones that fell in the wilderness. Let our heart be ready to enter into the wilderness right now so you can go in without any doubt, without any uh, wanting to go back to a place which we knew was not good for us, but because it had provided certain things that had us spoiled as a people. We become spoiled. That's why we're looking for everything to be given to us. We become spoiled. But Abiyah has said, I will keep you. I will protect you. Even in this particular chapter here, he talks about even the clothes uh, grew with them. That's your provision. We have must trust that, all right? And I'm gonna remind us because we talked about Mr. Babylon, but it's all is bringing full circle what Yah is showing us and what he's going to continue to do. But we must be obedient. All right. So it says, guard to do every command which I command you today, that you might live and you shall increase and go in and shall possess the land which Yahuwah swore to your forefathers. And you shall remember that Yahuwah, your Elohim, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to be to humble you, prove you to know what is in your heart whether you will guard his commands or not. And he humbled you and let you suffer hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. All right. Yah is trying and showing us our hearts. So remember this. So, as, as, as said, we are back in Ezekiel. We're in chapter 20, all right? Um, but um, when I go through this particular, like uh, this verse here, I'm going to ask somebody to uh, go to uh, Ezekiel 8 um, as well, because I'm going to show you something that Yah continues to iterate to us as well here. And it says this, And it came to be in the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the 10th of the new moon, that certain of the elders of Israel came to acquire of Yahuwah and sat before me. And the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, son of man, speak to the elders of Israel and say to them, thus said the master Yahuwah, have you come to acquire of me? As I live, I am not being acquired of by you, declares the master Yahuwah. Judge them, son of man, judge them, Make known to them the abominations of their fathers. Already here, Abiyah is telling Ezekiel, they're coming to acquire, but they have not acquired of Abiyah. More so, they're coming to ask Ezekiel, what should they do? What must they do? Because they don't want to hear Yah. But you know what Yah does? He speaks to his, to his vessels, which Ezekiel was his vessel, and he spoke to them. Exactly what Yah will say. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, you name it. They will always speak what the Most High has given. They're the mouthpiece for Yah. And when they spoke these things, even the priest, even those leaders of this time did not want to take heed. The elders did not want to take heed. Because what? They want to hear a smooth thing. They want to hear a nice thing. They want to hear something that tickles the ear. We're living in a time now where we can't let our ears be tickled. We must have a forehand like Flint. We must obey Yah. Because in the end, there is a great reward for those that obey. Mashiach showed us perfectly, perfectly how to do it. So we're, we are without excuse. But with this, if somebody can go to Ezekiel 8, I'm going to show you a parallel here as well. Um, anybody go to Ezekiel 8 really quickly? I'm there. All right, Toda. If you can begin to read Ezekiel 8, uh, I'm going to show you a parallel here. Uh, from the beginning? 
Yeah, that's good. That's great. Okay. And it came to be in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Yehuda sitting before me, that the hand of the Adon, Yahuwah, fell upon me there. And I looked and I saw a likeness like the appearance of fire. From his waist and downward, the appearance was like fire. And from his waist and upward, the appearance was brightness like glowing metal. And he stretched out the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my hair. And the Ruach lifted me up between the Eretz and the Shamayim and brought me in visions of Elohim to Yerushalayim, to the door of the north gate of the inner court, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which causes jealousy. And see, the esteem of Elohim of Yasharel was there, like the vision that I saw in the plain. And he said to me, son of man, please lift your eyes towards the north. And I lifted my eyes northward. And north of the altar gate, I saw this image of jealousy in the entrance. And he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations which the house of Yasharel are doing here, driving me away from my Mikdash. And you are to see still greater abominations. Then he brought me to the door of the court. And I looked and saw a hole in the wall. And he said to me, son of man, please dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, I saw a door. And he said to me, go in and see the evil abominations which they are doing there. And I went in and looked and saw all kinds of creeping creatures, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Yasharel carved all around on the walls. And facing them, stood 70 men of the elders of the house of Yasharel, and in their midst stood Yahazanyahu, son of Shaphan. Each one had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Yasharel are doing in the dark, each one in the room of his idols? For they say, Yahuwah does not see us, Yahuwah has forsaken the land. And he said to me, you are to see still greater abominations, which they are doing. Toda. You can stop right there. So when we are here in this chapter here, and all those things you just seen, the Most High shown Ezekiel before they come here even to meet and sent before him. Yah was showing him exactly what they were doing. That's how he knew they didn't inquire of him, because they knew that they couldn't go before Yah being filthy like that. So they thought they was going to get around it by going to a, a, a Navi being Ezekiel in this particular um, chapter. See, even for them to say that Yah can't see us, Yah sees everything. There's nothing hidden from Yah. It's a way that Yah orchestrates things as well, where he'll make things very plain and make it very visible. Don't be as these elders here trying to go position before Yah and going around about every other way instead of going to Yah with a humble and repentant heart because Yah sees you and he will expose it as he's doing with these elders and he's showing Ezekiel. But they didn't acquire it of Abba Yah. They wanted to see if maybe Yah didn't see them in their acts and what they do behind closed doors. But y'all will not be mocked. It is written. Well, the man soweth, that shall he also reap. It is written. Everything that contained in the Tanakh and everything that's revealed in the Brit Shah, we must see and we must obey. We must understand. Don't learn the ways of our forefathers, the ones that went contrary to Yah, because he sees and he revisits the iniquities of the fathers, passed down to the children upon the third and fourth generation of those that hate him, but showing love and mercy to us that love him and keep his commandments. It's simple. Obey Yah's voice. And I'm going to continue to iterate this because we're living in a time, if it's possible, even the very elect will be deceived.
That's why a few be that find their narrow path. Mishpaka, let us all get before Yah even the more so and make sure we're hearing Yah. As I shared for many of you all that were on our Midrash Torah study and I, and I shared about the, the uh, particular dream that happened and I brought it before you guys so it could be judged and it could be tested. And it says, as the day come near, you 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 prophesy amongst each other, so therefore you all be held accountable. We all be held accountable to what we say as pertains to Yah's word. And what was seen, it wasn't pretty. And it was to the point where the 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 agony of it was because they did not take heed. Our people are not taking heed. I'll be I was going to give us so many more warnings until he takes his Ruach and his Ichabob, the glory leaves. Don't grieve the Ruach. Don't see your conscience with a hard iron. These scriptures are written for us to understand, to learn aforetime so we do not repeat them. Don't be stiff neck. Take heed. Abiyah is speaking to us, and many of us hear him, but we still try to ignore his voice because we think that we're going to get away with what we're doing. No. Yah does not respect the persons either. So let us hear Yah. Let us discern his voice. Let us know his voice because he said, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. Hear the voice of Yah. I'm going to continue to say that. If, the, if that's the last thing I got to say, if that's the only thing y'all allows me to say, make sure y'all hearing him. Don't be misled because even the, it says even elect, if it feels possible, will be deceived. Toda Aki Husha for reading that. More Go ahead. <clears throat> I don't want to read the whole chapter, but it seems like everything that we put together here, that you put together here, that the Most High is showing, is the same thing that the writer of the fourth chapter of Hebrew was trying to warn the Hebrew at that time. Mm. Because it, was, it talks about the same thing, entering into the rest, but having the faith to enter into the rest. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, if you don't mind. Go ahead. It says, if I can find them again, because it says, uh, it says, for we which believe do enter into the rest, as he said, as he have sworn into, he has sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, all those that worketh and finish from the uh, foundation of the work. The foundation, everything, all the work that Yah did for us was done in the foundation of the earth. But you can see right here when he talks in certain places, I didn't mark it in this chapter, it talks about those that missed the mark because they had no faith. They they didn't build their faith in the Most High. They were too busy looking at the surrounding uh, 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 nations and patterning themselves just like uh, what was spoken of in uh, Isaiah the eighth chapter. You know they had their little idols and this that and the other, but they knew what was required of them from the Most High. If anybody, if any nation on the earth knew, we knew, our forefathers knew. But how they missed the mark is, and I hear you're saying you're you're doing the same plea right now as the writer of uh, uh, of Hebrew and of uh, Ezekiel, and you're you're telling us please don't miss the mark, you know, because everything is right in front of us, and that's what we need to reach out and do. And uh, if you get time, anybody, just read the fourth chapter of Hebrews, and you will see exactly about the rest that he promised us. And then how seeing therefore in the uh, reminded that some of them must enter into, but some of them, even though it was first preached to, not be, not be, not make it in because of their unbelief. And I yield. Toda, toda. So like I said, uh, when we deal with this particular part, like I said, it was already revealed to Ezekiel prior to and even even some of the other Navi. But when we look at this in Ezekiel here, 
he reflects but i ref, we reflect back on uh, ezekiel 8 you can see that even then when y'all reveal and show him look, open the wall you're gonna see more and more and more abominations this one only just dealing during this time it was stuff that he's seen that even goes to our time we live in it now right and that's why we have to stay to the pulse of Yah. we have to stay in alignment with him regardless of anything because when y'all reveals he reveals and just now he gives you right way to discern and how to walk about and that's why he asked he said why are they coming to acquire of you pretty much but they're not acquiring of me they have not acquired of me and you're gonna see as we continue to go through this but Yah has grace and mercy but he just want them to teshuva which it takes a lot for israel to be to be none of and like our forefathers when they were just stiff neck it takes a lot to remove that stiff neck out of our people so uh, we continue here but i just want to bring it up and told off uh Akihusha for reading that as well but um okay are you able to read um if not i will continue to read or i was saying we're outside so there's a lot of background noise i know Akihusha and cody kelly said that they can if you want okay well perfect uh and anybody want to begin to read and tell me what's on the screen? Yes, ma'am. All right. So Ezekiel 25 through 7. And ye shall say to them, thus said the master Yahuwah, on the day which, on the day when I choose you, Yisrael, and lifted my hand in an oath to the seed of the house of Yaakov, and made myself known to them in the land of Misery. I lifted my hand in an oath to them, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. On that day, I lifted my hand in an oath to them to bring them out of the land of Mizraim into a land that I had searched out for them, flowing with milk and honey, the splendors of, our la of all lands. And I said to them, each one of you, throw away the abomination which are before his eyes and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Mizraim, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So, um, just read it in, read it also talking earlier about, um, you know, the first command that Yah didn't want nothing before him. He's a jealous Elohim. It's a, it's a continuous thing he shows us because this is not something new either. Um, but he's going to get that concept because anytime we place stuff before him, it can be anything. It can be wife, uh, it can be uh, if for, uh, for women, it could be a husband, uh, for, for it could be children, it could be possessions, it could be job, it could be any of those things that place before him, and that becomes an idol, right? Even when it comes to his word and people uh, putting people before the most high to bring out his word, that's why I always tell you guys, I'm just a servant. You know, we have a great uh, a shepherd. That was Mashiach, right? But I'm just a servant. You know, I, ain't nothing good in me you know, like Masha said, there's no good, but yeah, you see what I'm saying? So when we understand that, even Masha knew, don't put nothing before Yah. And so all I is a vessel that's going to bring his word and say and give any kind of commentary that Yah allows me to speak. But ultimately, even though we listen to my commentary, he God's word, because Yah's word is the truth. We just can kind of give a explanation on certain things, but Yah's word at the end of the day is the truth. So He's telling us again and again, reiterating, because he's preparing us for the wilderness, you know, to ultimately be purified, cleansed, because he's going to play with us face to face. And if we can't take it now, we ain't going to be able to take it then. And we don't want to be a rebel. We don't want to be, um, you know, purged out as a rebel. We want to be righteous for y'all. Akusha, I see you had your hand. Oh, um, as a, I remember, like, as a child, like, I remember hearing that in that system, like the jealousy of Yah, and that always like threw me off because I always had a miss, you know, I always had the world's view of what jealousy was. And so like, I was like, how is, how is he good, but then jealous? Like, it didn't make any sense to me. But once uh, the Most High, like obviously takes us through things. And obviously when you get married and you actually read what the scripture says concerning the husband, like you uh, mentioned earlier, um, it breaks down exactly what that jealousy is and why it's a deserving jealousy. Like when something belongs to you, like it's yours, like, you know, so anybody that comes in between that, you're going to be jealous. Like that's a, that's an expectation that you're going to be jealous. And that's why it was, you know, even considered for that, for that husband to be able to sit in that seat because it's like, no, I have a right 
to feel the way that I'm feeling because what has transpired. And so here you have Yahuwah, who is the same, you know, yesterday, today, and forevermore. So now he's letting us know that, look, you belong to me. Like, you don't get to just live how you want to live. You don't get to just lay around and then go and, and commit all these whorings with these idols and think that I don't see you and think that you can just come back to me as if I didn't know that you just you just slept around on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it don't work that way. And so, you know, just wanted to kind of reiterate that, like that jealousy is a deserving jealousy, you know, and it's a righteous jealousy um, because it's um, it's a it's a situation where this is a possession that is yours, that you have uh, committed to, that you have given your heart to. It's like he's he's committed to us. So when we aren't committed to him, like he's can he it is OK for him to be jealous because it's a righteous jealousy. Yep. And even to that point, when we were reading in Isaiah 43, he said, you're mine. It, it's, that's a possessive word, mine. So <laughs> if he don't change, even to this day, he's still the same. That's why, you know, we can't put nothing before him. We can't, you know, and I, and I, and I, that's why I always iterate to you guys. We all servants, you know what I'm saying? Most high tell, he would tell us that he don't necessarily need us. He'll, he'll, he said I had a rocks crowd, you know, so if, if, if it's that serious for y'all, we must stay in a, a place of humility and let y'all do the work. But at the end of the day, don't put nothing before him because that's where we get caught up into the ways of this world when that stuff happens, because we begin to choose certain things over him because we want to, in a way, our heart is really, it's really revealing our hearts and manifesting and it's showing outwardly what we really and truly um, stand for. So I just, I just want to share that. And then Aku, you should go ahead. Shalom, this is uh, Angel. Uh, I wanted to just share, in addition to what you said, that um, you were mentioning the scripture says that Yah is the only one good, which is true. Um, and he also said that um, we are created in Yahusha to do good works. And so we want to also remember that though he's the only one that's good, he tells us to be as he is. So he says, be perfect as he is perfect. If we walk in the Ruach, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then he also told uh, Jeremiah, who he said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Uh, I kodash you. I set you apart and I made you a nevi to the nations. And so even with him, um, and even the messenger, um, I think in Hazan, told the yoke and I said, don't bow, don't worship me. I'm a fellow servant just like you. And so I agree we are to always be um, humble. Um, me and my family were talking about what is the true definition of humility. And one of the words that kept standing out was obedience. All of y'all servants that he used that are his were obedient. And so if we are going to be humble. We have to understand that comes with being obedient. And he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from the Shamiam and heal their land. And so when we humble ourselves, we are turning away from every idol, uh, being obedient to Yah and making sure that we're not you know, to connect it to a lot of the things um, concerning, like when people say black pride and, you know, and, and, and that could be a whole nother conversation, you know, certain people might have their views on it, but, um, you know, notice pride is in that. And so we could be saying, be humble, but at the same time, be promoting those types of things or promoting um, things that concerns uh, our achievements. And so we have to make sure we understand what, what is true humility. It's those that do the desire of Yah that have come up under his authority that um, guard the first and second command. Love Yah with all your heart, mind, being, and strength. Second is out of the same. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so, yeah, that's all I want to say. Shalom. Shalom. All right. So, uh, Koti Kelly, uh, you want to keep? Okay. Uh, starting at verse 8. But they rebelled against me and would not obey me. All of them did not throw away the abomination which were before their eyes, nor did they forsake the idols of Mishraim. 
So I resolved to pour out my wrath on them to complete my displeasure against them in the midst of the land of Misereen. But I acted for my name's sake, that it should not be profaned before the eyes of the nations among whom they were, before whose eyes I had made myself known to them, to bring them out of the land of Misereen. So I took them out of the land of Misereen and brought them into the wilderness. Keep on. And I gave them my laws and showed them my right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me to know that I am Yahuwah who sets them apart. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my laws, and they rejected my right rulings, which, if a man does, he shall live by them. And they greatly profaned my Sabbaths. Then I said, I will pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness to consume them. And see, this continuous thing he's showing. They did not obey, and in the wilderness, this is where they're being judged at, because... He's even pleading with them face to face. He's using his mouthpieces even during that time. And it's nothing new. So it's a constant reminder of, that our hearts be circumspect for Yah, that we discern even for Yah to tell us this now and say, okay, if we know that this particular chapter here deals with talking about uh, a time where it's going to be, we ain't even going to talk about the first one no more, the first Exodus, but the second one is going to be greater. How much more greater that judgment, too? You see what I'm saying? Because if, if, if he's just, he deals with just scales. And that's why he has to continue to plead with us on these parts. He even, he even tells us in Isaiah, let, let us reason together. And it's not so much that he's reasoning the fact of that he needs to do that, but that's just Yah's patience. His long suffering towards us that none should uh, what perish, but that all should come to Teshuvah, repentance. That's Yah love, you know? So uh, as we all have a passion for Yah's word, let us have the compassion to make sure that we are examining ourselves with that same heat because in that, Abiyah will get the glory because what? One has to truly to Shuba inwardly and it manifests outwardly on what they're doing. Um, like I said, uh, many can uh, do as uh, Apostle Shaul said, uh, but they deny the Ruach. You know what I'm saying? He said that in the last days, um, men should be lovers of themselves, co covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy, with a form of God that's even deny, denying the power thereof, such turn away. They deny the power of Yah, right? They deny his Ruach. But evil man should wax worse, and it should be manifest before all men. So we know that at the time we're living in, things are going to get worse. We just got to make sure that we're walking in line with Yah. If we be martyrs and it be for Yah's will, hallelujah. If we're, if we're to be in the wilderness, and it's to be those that be preserved until the time we return. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, wherever Yah has us, you should know at this point whether you're going to be this or whether you're going to be that. You're going to be hot or you're cold. Don't be lukewarm because he'll spill it out of his mouth. And he's showing us here as they were consumed in the wilderness. Don't be lukewarm going into the wilderness. You know, so. Ta -da. Okay, verse 14, but I acted for my name's sake, not to profane it before the nations, before whose eyes I had brought them out. And I myself also lifted my hand in an oath to them in the wilderness, not to bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey and splendor of all lands, because they rejected my right rulings and did not walk in my laws, and they profaned my Sabbath, for their heart went after their idols. And my eye pardoned them from destroying them, and I did not make an end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, do not walk in the laws of your fathers, nor observe their rulings, nor defile yourself with their idols. And I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and do them and set apart my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between you and me me and you to know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And just as our king, uh, Tim, uh, read in uh, Ev Ev or Hebrews uh, 4, it, it lines up this. <laughs> you know, we don't want to go through the motions 
of, of going to the rigor more of saying we're doing this and doing that, but we do not mix it with faith. Because you gotta have faith to even be in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. You gotta trust that Yah's gonna do these things. If you don't, if you don't even got that part to know you know Yah's voice, because you know Yah's voice, it's like a parent that tells their child to do something. They know their parents' voice, they're gonna do it because they know their parents are going to bring exactly what they said. If you don't do it, I'm gonna do this. You know, that's how Yah deals with us. He chasing those that he love. But to the point where your disobedience will come to the point of hindrance. And is Yah even having his Torah about a, a disobedient child? What will happen to them? So no need to be disobedient. Make sure we hear Yah's voice. And you may ask, how do we hear Yah's voice? It's in his word. It's already, his, he's given us his rock that leading guidance into all truth. If you don't have his rock, you need to seek, it. you need to ask for it. Well, he, well, he says, if a wicked father know how to give good, good to his children, how much more of, that, of us that ask will he give us? He, he's telling, talking about his Ruach. People don't ask for his Ruach. I'll be out. Feel me more your Ruach. Feel me more your Ruach. Give me more of your spirit. Give me more of your discernment. We don't ask for that. That's something we should ask for daily. We don't want to be like the foolish virgins. We want to be like the wise. You want to have that, the anointing of the Ruach in you, especially in these times, as it gets dark and dark. Lockheed Tim? You know, uh, Toda on what you're saying. Uh, we're in between two things here. Isaiah 66 and 4 and uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 about delusions, strong delusions and delusions. And on this side of the cross at this bit of time, this is a place uh, just for us having this, this sober enough in the Ruach to have this conversation shows that we're seeking truth. Because there's so many about us that are not seeking truth, and we can see we can see the the uh, the evidence of this, and 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 how we're walking today. It's so much that is yelling at us out of the Brit House shy. It's not funny, because we we we're hearing Revelation 12, we're hearing Revelation 13. Then we're we're hearing all these different things that saying, "I'm here, I'm coming," and no more. He's coming, but all the evidence that he said, prepare yourself, prepare yourself, is screaming at us right now. It is screaming, get your house in order mm. because I am coming quickly and my reward is with me and he's going to repay us. And when we're in that wilderness and can't go under that rod because of our rebelliousness as our forefathers was, you know, I don't think that's a time of negotiation. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think that goes to the point where we were saying he said gonna play with us face to face. See, people think it's. I think some people think it's like one of those things. Like once I see it, then I'll then I'll listen. No, because your heart is already if it's already wax cold, if it's already hardened, you ain't gonna listen because you're gonna say, well, it's always something in you. It's the part of the flesh that wants to disobey. And to say you're gonna wait, just like people say they're gonna wait to their deathbed to to really try to obey Yah in his word. You can't wait, you can't wait on something like that. You have to you have to hear his voice today, hard not your heart. The day that you hear, that's the thing. And as Jesus says, I can't, I think what they don't realize, and I think Aki Husha been hitting on this, him and um Akoti Andrew, about preparing before you go in. You know, preparing before you go in, because it's gonna be so much temptation. Even in the midst of that, to just say, you know what, is it even worth it? You know, just on a natural day, if he was fasting, right, even if we came out at 11, you know, it was the temptation of flesh to say, hey, I want to maybe, I'm going to get some, um, so eat some bread. Now, I'm willing not to really think about it, but it just because it had been so accustomed to doing it so long, and then we're in the land of our captivity as we are now. It's still parts of us that's that's still parts of this nation that's still in us that he needs to rid out. So we need to get it out before the wilderness, before we be like our forefathers. I don't believe y'all are gonna wait for the years again. You see what I'm saying? I believe as as I said in the word, it's it's gonna be a new thing, but at the same time, it's gonna be it's gonna be even more greater. So that means that we we must really take this thing serious. And I don't think people are taking this serious. That's the part that's 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 that vexes me and how I can feel I know y'all feel it how our forefathers that was trying to walk upright before y'all felt 
not just vexed with people not listening, but you got the wickedness in this world and just it just vexes you. It vexes you. You know, as as you said, as it was in days Lot, they, Lot was vexed. Noah was vexed. So if you know that if it's just like those days and they were vexed, don't you think it's at the door? These things are at the door? As Zakin said, y'all saying, prepare, 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 because he's coming back. And he's getting every man according to his work and his deed. You're going to get paid. You're going to get a reparation. All right. And you better hope that reparation is salvation and not, not, <laughs> not condemnation because he's going to get every man according to his work and his deed. And he said, I come quickly. He is the Aleph and the Tav, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to get right. more slides, but I just want to kind of just share that as, as we go through. But I'm going to try to let's let this flow. And if we need to park at any of these, um, we let y'all allow us to, you know, to flow. But I just want to share that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 21. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my laws and my right rulings. They did not guard them. They did not guard to do them. Which, if a man does, he shall live by them. They profane my Sabbath, so I resolve to pour out my wrath on them to complete my displeasure against them in the wilderness. But I held back my hand and acted for namesake, not to profane it before the eyes of the nation, before whose eyes I had brought them out. Also, I myself lifted. I myself lifted my hand in an oath to those in the wilderness to scatter them among the nation and despair them throughout the lands. I'm sorry, I need to stop here for a minute. I'm reading this and I just keep seeing a theme over and over again. He raises his hand in an oath. He's giving you time and time again. How much more do we need? Now I understand what you mean when you say our spirits are vexed. I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Uh, verse 24. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying it. I mean, it, it's it's like hit, it's like hitting home. Like I, who? Okay, verse twenty four. Because they had not done my right rulings, and they rejected my laws, and they profane profane my sabbaths, and their eyes were on their father's idols. They didn't even have new idols of their own. He do. Mm. That's Come on, I, don't learn the ways, and that's why I, I shared that before. So we have we had those that was righteous uh that the most high gave us even in the book of hebrews that was in the hall of faith but they even had idols they even had things they were dealing with right but but he told us who to watch who to look after he said hey, follow his son our forefathers failed they just they 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 men just like us they women just like us right so we can look at their lifestyle to to, to not walk in their ways when they did fall and we can turn learn example from the good that they did do, but we want to follow the holistically how to walk this thing out. Mashiach, Mashiach, look at what he did. Filter to what he did. Learn the way that Mashiach had that man of and you that Mashiach had. And when you get that, man, it's gonna put us in a different place because now you have nothing but to be a servant. You let the greatest among you serve. All of us are servant, and I'm not greater than nobody. I'm. <laughs> As Paul said, I'm filthy rag. But the fact that y'all is giving me a chance to 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 uh to speak and, and share, I'm gonna obey his word because I don't want to be held accountable and his head bloods on my head because I didn't warn. You know, I don't want that. But that's a worse judgment. When I mean, you knew and you didn't say. Don't hold back the truth and unrighteousness. More Ray. Mm -hmm. Look how long he's been having this conversation with our people from 14, 14, 14th century, way back there. And now look where we at in Ezekiel 593. That's 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 right around the time after uh, King Nebuchadnezzar came and got the second books and took them all the way to uh, 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 Spain. This this is how long he's been pleading. Now we take that and add the Masiak and add another two thousand years. So we almost six thousand years of him pleading, saying the same exact thing, and we're still in the same place. Not all of us, because now we're dealing with people that say, "Uh, uh, 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 all oh, this work was done through the Masiak." I mean, 
through Christ Jesus. And we don't have to. We can eat pork. We can do this. We can do that. We can do that. And they don't know that we're in the most horrific time of existence. We're walking right into that, that tribulation right now. They're getting ready to change the currency. Uh, the, the American dollar is about to fall. They're going to change the currency. Uh, the beast type attitude uh, uh, in the uh, government is going to tell you, you either do this or you going or we going you going to perish. No, no in between, no gray areas. And yet look how long suffering that the most High has been with his people, not only his people, Paul Saul warned in, in the, in the 11th chapter of, uh, 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 what was it wrong when he told the Gentiles to go in? He said, Listen, if he did that to the root, what will he do to you? Hmm. And they still following the way of Catholicism and all that other stuff. We are in the most, we are in the most wonderful time, fearful time, but we're not fearing. It's not a fear of fear, but it's just to know that Yah has us as his children. And I yield. And one more thing before I go, uh, 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 Angel, uh, Cody Angel, she always be speaking my good scriptures when she talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Yah. That's all him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to land back on what uh, Zakin said, and if, if I have this correct, with the thousand years being like a day to Yah. So that means after Zakin pointed out so long, he's been pleading to his people. It's like yesterday that he's remembering everything that has gone on. Uh, and if we say a thousand years uh, is a day, then it's all, it's not even a week old for Yah with all that has gone on. And um, how serious I key, I can't hear you, man. Oh, well, I apologize. Um, can you hear me now? I hear you, but turn it up a little. Let, I'm all the way up. It's like you're going lower and lower and lower. All right. No, I'm saying uh, when, you, when you mentioned the 6,000 years or the time period that Yah has been pleading with us, and we think about the 1,000 years that being a day to Yah, then it's not even a week old. Uh, what worth of things that Yah is seeing and doing within Yah Sherelle and how serious it is and uh, – how he's seeing everything, you know, and I'm just saying that's that's not a whole lot. So right there, everything is right before him. Of course it is, but when you just spoke of that timeline, and I and I thought about that, so I just land back in that way. And I yield. Toda, toda, toda. All right. All right. Verse twenty five. Unless somebody has something else to say. No. Okay. Verse 25, and I also gave them up to laws that were not good and right rulings by which they would not live. And I defiled them by their own gifts as they pass all their firstborn through the fire so that I might stun them so that they know that I am Yahuwah. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Yeshurel and, and you shall say to them, thus said the master Yahuwah, in this, your fathers have further reviled me by committing trespass against me. Continue. When I brought them into the land for which I had lifted my hand in an oath to give them, and they saw all the high hills and all the thick trees, they slaughtered their slaughterings there and provoked me with their offerings there. And they sent up their sweet fragrance there and poured out their drink offerings there. And I said to them, which is this high place to which you go? So its name is called high place to this day. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the master Yahuwah, are you defiling yourselves in the ways of your fathers? Or do you whore after their abominations? Oh. Mm. For when you lift up your gifts and make your sons pass through the fire, you defile your safe, yourselves with all your idols, even to this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, declares the master Yahuwah, I am not being inquired of by you. And what comes up in your spirit shall never be. 
when you say, let us be like the nations, like the tribes in other lands, serving wood and stone. As I live, declares the master Yahuwah, do not I with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out reign over you? And I shall bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the lands where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out. And I shall bring you into the wilderness of the peoples and shall enter into judgment with you face to face there. Now, this is the part I was saying. See, this is why I think it's it's been pressing for all of us that it's like, get this thing together right now because if we it, it, we know that no one can see y'all's face and live like so mm-hmm. if he's gonna plead with the face to face you better be right before him because flesh and blood will not glory in his sight but it's also sharing sharing something to us here because if he's bringing us in there and, and we don't know it, it you know and it's not saying it's a timeline okay the day you get there they gonna be there and face face we don't know if it'd be the same day you get in the wilderness or the day after or whatever. But if you're waiting to say, I'm gonna get there and just test the waters, you're already, you're already putting yourself in danger. Because he, he said, he's it, gonna go into judgment with us. And this judgment is dealing on a, a balanced righteous scale. We will war for the righteous and, 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 and cut off for the wicked. That sounds like the five wise and five foolish to me. Mm-hmm. We're going to see why that, why that particular thing said. And, and remember what I said at the beginning uh, when I shared with all of you all. And that's why I say we have to be wise, especially when we um on live, how we speak and say certain things, because it's a reason why y'all, why my shark particularly told us why the serpent harmless is dove. It's a reason why. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share it at the end um, as we get into that part, because it's already written in the word on how we ought to operate. And so... Uh, you can continue, Coach Kelly. 36. As I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Misarim, so I shall enter into the judgment with you, declares the Master Yahuwah. And I shall make you pass over, pass under the rod, and shall bring you into the bond of the covenant, and purge the rebels from among you and those who trespass against me. From the land where they sojourn, I bring them out but they shall not come into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the master Yahuwah, give, go, serve each of you his idols. And afterwards, if you are not listening to me, but do not profane my set apart name anymore with your gifts and your idols, for on my set apart mountain, on the mountain height of Israel, declares the master Yahuwah, there all the house of Israel, all of them in the land shall serve me. There I shall accept them and there I shall require your offerings and the first fruits of your offerings together with all your set apart gifts. As a sweet fragrance, I shall accept you when I bring you out from the peoples and I shall gather you out of the lands where you have been scattered and I shall be and I shall be set apart in you before the nations and you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I bring you into the land of Israel into the land of which I lifted my hand in an oath to give to your fathers and there you shall remember your ways and all your deeds with which you were defiled and you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight because of all the evils that you did. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your evil ways, nor according to your corrupt deeds, O house of Israel, declares the master Yahuwah. And the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, son of man, set your face toward the south and drop word against the south and prophesy against the forest land, the south. And you shall say to the forest in the south, hear the words of Yahuwah. Thus said the master Yahuwah, see I am kindling a fire in you and it shall devour every green tree and every dry tree in you. The blazing flame is not quenched 
and it shall burn all faces from the south to the north. And all the flesh shall see that I, Yahuwah, have kindled it. It is not quenched. And I says, Ah, Master Yahuwah, they are saying of me, is he not speaking parables? Mm. They still don't believe. So read, that, don't read that last line of 49 again, because this is where I want to bring um, with this. And as you guys see, as we read through this, it's easy to just go through and commentate. But it, as we um, bring this to a full focus, Abiyah showed us what he was displeased with. But then, he, then you can see the transition as he's showing his mercy, and his grace towards us. And he said that I will bring you. He's still going to keep his word. He's still going to keep his oath. And, and he's going to deal with us even in that time. But as, as we're preparing ourselves for that time, he says this in 49. You read that again, according to you, um, Kelly. Okay. As I said, I, Master of Yahuwah, they are saying of me, is he not speaking parables? Is he not speaking parables? It's time to speak in parables. It's for us to, it's, it's given to us to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, but for for the world and those that do not seek after him, it's going to be a parable to them. They're going to ask, what, what is what is this is what is what is going on in the world? The world, everything that's happening right now is a parable to those that are blind, because they don't understand what Yah is doing. He is possibly pleading, as I can you mentioned. We don't know because some people, like I said, I think they're waiting to get to a wilderness then to to Shuba. when i realized that this is a, a kind of wilderness already if you're not preparing yourself now you're not ready you're going to be like the foolish and going to begin the acts of those that have the oil that understand yah's word that obey yah's word and kept his word and was ready to enter in but those that didn't he gonna say what or those of us that are now understanding, go and give buy for yourself. Now you know you can't buy, buy Yah's anointing. You can't buy you can't buy your salvation. You can't buy none of that. Mm -hmm. What did they really go get? They went and got another interpretation, or what? What did they go get? That's the question. What did they go get? So I'm saying that's to say this. It is time for us to speak in parables. We ought to know how to speak in this time. Yah is gonna give us wisdom on how to do it. Mashiach and them did it. That's why you see the apostles and all of them saying certain things that it's like, man, like they they give they giving us nuggets here on how to operate even when you're doing going through persecution. But don't be foolish. Don't be like the foolish. Don't understand. Don't have enough oil in their own lap. Keep asking Abiyah. Feel me with your ruach because his ruach is what leads and guides us to all truth. And it says, my people give ear to my Torah. This is in Psalm 78. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I open my mouth in a parable. I utter riddles of old, which I have heard and known. For our fathers have related them to us. We do not hide them from our, their children, relating to the generation to come, the praises of Yahuwah, and his strength and his, wonderful, his wonders, which he has done. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing that's going to continue. He's opened his mouth in the parables. And what is he doing? Giving us riddles of what they say some, in some translation, dark sands of old. And we talked about this before. So I'm just kind of highlighting it, hitting on it um, as well. Um, but these things we ought to understand. Why we ought to speak in parables. And it says, for he has raised a witness in your code and set a Torah in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach them to their children that it might be known to the generation to come to the children whom will be born to raise up and relate them to their children and place their trust in Elohim and not forget the works of El, but watch over his commands and not be like their forefathers, a, stub a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation which did not prepare its heart. Remember, we're talking about preparing. They're not, we still, the people not preparing their hearts. So that's what y'all call stubborn and rebellious because your heart is not prepared. You're not ready. Whose spirit was not what? Steadfast with El or Elohim. And so what is a what is a dark saying? What is a, a riddle? For giving insight to the simple, knowledge and discretion, 
to the young. The wise ones hears and increases learning, and the understanding and, uh, and understanding one gets wise counsel. For understanding a proverb in a in a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. For the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but what fools despise wisdom and discipline. Hence, why I keep saying here Yah, because Yah word has all the instructions we need on how we ought to operate the times we're living in. Don't be a fool. Be wise. And so, when we continue in the Mr. Babylon and understanding that, all what we just said is dealing with the house because the house has to be dealt with first before we even really deal with Yah doing what he's going to do to Mr. Babylon. And we're seeking out in the word to show that the word speak and show us who lines up with this particular scripture and these scriptures that we see. But we must deal with the house. And that's why we're going on this full thing that y'all showing us. But he's going to bring us out. And that second act is going to be greater than, than the first. But how y'all is bringing us out, let y'all reveal it. He's revealing it piece by piece for us. But let us discern by y'all's word. And I see we have uh, two hands. I don't know who went first. Uh, let me stop sharing real quick, though. When you said, um, um, I think I read, and I'm just asking this for clarity. I think I read somewhere where it says that even though you can get to the wilderness, you can still die in the wilderness. So in all you're doing, if you're just doing stuff just to get to the wilderness, you got to understand, I, I, maybe it's me. Just help me out. Sometimes, like I tell T, I I have to speak things out to get an understanding. So if we're working or we're looking to Yah to just to get to the wilderness, you can be like your forefathers and still die in the wilderness and not go further. So it's not just about getting to the wilderness. It's just about seeking Yah's heart, period. Mm, that's it. You know, you know, she just, you just quoted a scripture in Hebrew. It says that their carcasses fell in the wilderness because of their unbelief. And that's that's the scripture in uh, Hebrew, I believe it's uh, it might be the uh, it might be in the fourth chapter, it might be in the third, but it, yeah, because it says that that they, they fell in the wilderness because they did not, they would not, and, and you know that's sad. But then look at the sad thing we talked about the other day, Moray. We talked about how Kayla, uh, I mean Caliph, and uh, and uh, Joshua had to wait 40 years for the rest of them to get ready. But there ain't going to be none of that this time. <laughs> and to that point, um, when she asked the question about, you know, trying to get somewhere, and that's the thing that, 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 that why we have to understand about now preparing yourself, because a lot of us may not make, you know, to, tomorrow might be our day. The most high said, you know, it's time, you know, you might not make it to tomorrow. Right. So if we if we're waiting and say, all right, I'm going to start, I'm going to start getting things together. Kind of like what people do around the feast days. They wait until the feast days to really start doing things. It should be a continuous life thing. Y'all don't want to see repetition in the way of religion. If this going to be your life, let it be your life. You know, right. people, people, people do this today where they, 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 will, they will go the week and don't think of y'all, but they get to the weekend, whether it's Shabbat or Sunday. And then now they want to start saying, I got to get myself ready to go to, to the, the house of the Lord and get myself. That's wickedness. Mm. Y'all know your heart. It's definitely wicked. You think you're fooling y'all because you're coming in with dressed up. You know, different than those that are that was hypocritical in the, in the first century or prior to that. So why, why we wait to get ourselves prepared even for the wilderness? Because the wilderness is just another trial and test. Absolutely. So you're missing the mark still if you're thinking that the wilderness is your, your end destination and it's not your end destination. You're still falling short of the most high. Yeah. Come on now, Moshe, Moshe didn't get to go go in. Mm -hmm. I know respect the person. <laughs> so as I said, y'all has no respect the persons. We need to get that. And I mean, didn't make it either. To the point of this, and then I see Ak Donnell and Akoti Andrea. 
to the point of this. He's so much not a respected person, even he had to turn his face from his own son. Being that his son had not known, had did not do no sin, but because our sin was upon him, and even he, even even my child was praying to the father, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, let your will be done. So who are we? Who are we? Who we think we is? We got, we got, we got some. That's some pride, and I think Akiu should hit on that as well. We we think you know when it, I think uh, it was maybe Co uh, Coach Angel. Okay, we Israel. That means nothing to y'all if you ain't being those that what represent his name. Because let me say he's doing it for his namesake. Mm -hmm. And if you, have, if you are blaspheming his name among the nation by how you act, you're actually doing a disservice, and you may actually burn it. A weeping of coals on your head in, in instead, instead of you thinking you're going to be justified with Yah, Yah is going to judge you because of what? He said, you've been carrying my name, but you have been what? Causing to be blasphemy among the nation. He's doing it for his namesake. And then they brother, preferred. So, uh, Ak Donnell, uh, Coach Andrea. Yeah, I just saw, uh, uh, it, it was uh, the same as earlier. When I discern uh, what our forefathers went through and how that went, that was that's the biggest picture in my mind in the uh, in the scriptures, and I see that. I don't know, not, I don't know what's happening, but it sounds like you're going going in and out. Hear that? You got a bad connection today, man. Yeah, I, like I definitely want to hear what you're saying. This connection a little is this a little better? That's better. Uh, I was going to say I was discerning. I was looking at the wilderness as, as well, along with the uh, Cody Kelly when we both put our hands up, and I discerned uh, that the biggest thing we're going to need in the wilderness is humility and thinking about how our ancestors went about. They were very complaining, and um, I think if we, I just think it's it's not going to be very easy but i think Yah is going to be with us and once we all uh tap in to once we all tap in on being on one accord and understanding the how has us doing in the world his word a little tough during the wilderness but i honestly i just really want to say that humility is going to be the biggest humility and faith is going to be the two biggest things in the world. Okay. Coach Andrea, I don't know if I got now muted, but he had, he went out a bit. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just I'll yield. Yeah, you're you're going in and out. Coach Andrea, yeah, I, just, I just have a question regarding um Romans eleven on um, the twenty sixth chapter where it says, for the most part, is paraphrasing. Um, when Paul was speaking, I think he was speaking to the Gentiles. Um, that he blinded um Israel until the performance of the Gentiles has come. And then it says here, um, and shall all Israel shall be safe, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Is that regarding um, all Israel going into the wilderness, or is that something different? Now, we look at that word um, in the Greek, it's not talking about like, because in that case, I mean, we got to, we, everybody that was named after Israel from the ones that even fell asleep, right? All, you know, that mean that all of them will be in that, but it's, it's dealing with a remnant. It's, doing, it's dealing, it's, it's particularly dealing with a remnant. So it's not, it's not saying the, the whole scope of all, but it's dealing with, because if we say, if we use that and we try to use it from, from that, we have to use it for all parts, meaning that um, Jacob, just name all our forefathers and even those the children of them and children of them. That mean that all of them will have to be in, in that particular point. 
but we can't look at the scripture like that. We have to read it in context. And to say all Israel will be saved, what does that pertain to? Because it's an Israel that, that, that only believe on Mashiach. Those that believe on Mashiach, those that obey what y'all said, they will be saved. Because they are true Israel. Not all that say they are Israel, Israel. Remember that word that scripture too. So we have to prepare for that as well. Masha told us that. Some people are they father the devil. You got some more coaching on Andrea? Oh no, Toda. Toda. Akihusha. Oh, I was just adding to what she was saying. So it was just what the Mashiach said, which is seek first my reign and all of my righteousness and all of these things will be added. And obviously he was talking specifically to, um, you know, them, you know, being concerned about, you know, day to day things and things like that. But I also do believe that he was just letting us know what we should be focused on and what we should be thinking about as opposed to like she was saying, you know, there's many people like looking towards the wilderness, but it's like, well, what is the wilderness? You know what I'm saying? And I remember reading in the scriptures where he says, well, what is the day of Yahuwah? You know, he's like a day of darkness and gloom and talking about the judgment. Like, but you know, you have people saying, oh, I'm looking forward to this day. It's just like, are you really like, cause I don't know if you really know what that day consists of. Um, and when we actually know like what that day consists of, and then, you know, actually who you are in him, um, and are obedient to his to his commands, then yes, you can look, we can look to that day and we can also know that that day is not going to come on us like a thief in the night for those who are expecting him. Going back to the, um, he says here, I am at, at, like, here I am at the door and I knock, like those who hear me, you know, answer like quickly, like we're going to run to the door, like excited to hear from him. But those who are walking in unrighteousness, going back to the wicked servant, and the trustworthy servant, you have the wicked servant who he says wants the the Adon, you know, um, it, it started to get long for, before he was coming. He delayed his coming. And so he's like, oh, OK, well, you know, he started beating the servants and he started drinking and getting drunk and just doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I believe that's a part of why the Most High like does the things that he does. And he doesn't just tell us specifically what he's going to do and when he's going to do it because he's testing our hearts. He's like, let me see what they do. Like, let me like going back to even the three days that they went without food in the wilderness. He's like, let me see what they do. Like, like, let me see what your heart is, because this is going to determine because that's where your desire comes from. That's where your appetite is. So it's like we're going to see where you really are coming out of Mitzrayim, coming out of this land of captivity, coming out of all of these idols and things, because now you got to you got to struggle. You got to you got to wait, you know, and that's one of the things that many of Yashua don't want to do. And I include myself is that, you know, we don't want to wait for Yah. You know, he tells us over and over again, wait on me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. So it's like, OK, well, if he's coming and we believe going back to that word belief and we obey um, what he's saying, then we're going to wait on him to do exactly what he said he's going to do. There's nothing in the word that he said he was going to do that he has not done. And so it's just like going back to us just trusting, okay, if I believe what I read and I'm reading the scriptures and I see where it said way back here in the beginning in Bereshit, and I'm seeing where it said way back in Tehillim and what it said way back in, you know, with the Nevi, and then here you have Yahushua fulfilling all of this. Then you have the emissaries fulfilling all of this. So it's like all of these things are coming to pass. Now we're in a time where we're seeing even more of that. You know, we're seeing the beginning of the birthing pains. We're seeing maybe even seals, you know what I'm saying, opening um, as as the times are getting more and more wicked. And so it's like, if you don't believe now, going back to the parables, like it's because you're seeing something that you you, you just can't see it. Yeah. You know, it's like, and the Most High is allowing that on purpose. Like he said, many in that day, you know, those who have insight in the book of Daniel will understand. But those who don't, he's like, they will go on doing what they've always done because they they don't get it. They will go on doing more wrong. And so even though the knowledge has increased, even though, you know, 
the the understanding is being given through the Ruach, it's like everybody's not submitting and everybody's not hearing the same thing. And so, but praise Yah that um, even in these conversations and even on this Shabbat, hearing Zakin, hearing you and hearing uh, Kote Kelly and hearing a lot of what the people are saying um, is is lining right up to what, you know, I believe uh, Abba has been saying uh, concerning his scriptures. And so, um, but yeah, praise Yah. Praise Yah. Yeah, like even in Peter, it says that it's going to be people that want, you we see it. Sometimes it's not verbally being said, but they're saying it in their heart because their heart is truly saying these things. Oh, it was a sign of his coming. Uh, since the father fell asleep, all things remain the same. You know, scoffers in the last days and they're walking out to their what? Own ungodly lust. And so those, those all those things must be fulfilled. That's what Masha gives us that in Matthew 24. Let no man deceive you, right? For many should come in his name. That's not just talking about people that are saying, it's easy to say, okay, somebody's saying that they they are the Amashia. No. Remember, Yah said his name. So that's even talking about us that's call ourselves Yisrael, or even say that we call ourselves the anointed ones, or even us that call ourselves uh, followers of him, coming in his name, using him as a proxy to get people to believe us. But what? To see many. We got to listen to what Yah said. You see, we look at the, the many encounters in the scriptures where Yah would give the word first account and then somebody else would come along the way and then say, well, like we mentioned about with the young prophet and the old prophet. Once I already told the young prophet what they say, Yah. And then here comes the old prophet. Oh, I'm a prophet too. Now, because that title, because that person is coming in the name as, as he is an anointed one, and then what happened to the young prophet? was slain because what he did not obey y'all's voice that's why i keep saying make sure y'all hear y'all's voice nobody should be telling you no listen to me i got the answer no none of us got the answer we still see a part of prophecy why would i follow anyone that has part of the prophecy no i'm following one that knows all prophecy you see what i'm saying like don't listen to me the word of y'all always has everything out all we're gonna do is edify each other because y'all's already spoken to each one of our, each one of our hearts and all we're gonna do is confirm what's been said and i always will say this nobody should bring you something that you never heard that i have now revealed to you if that's so then i mean that person is false well ray what's that up? young prophet was even told not to go the way of that old prophet yep we even see Balaam, right? He wasn't a he wasn't a chosen a, a child of, of Israel, but the most I used him for the for the purpose of of him being a mouthpiece in the sense of certain things that had to take place. But then he didn't even listen to Yah at a point, and he started listening to uh, Yah sent him an, a, a a lion spirit and told him to go with them the next day, and he went and he almost got his neck chopped off. <laughs> it, it's no, it's too many times in the scripture where Yah is telling people. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to obey. That's that's when it comes to having a relationship. That's big time right now. You better have a relationship with y'all. Because he's going to be saying, I never knew you. You heard everybody else. That's why I said, I'm not going to go off what other people are saying. I'm going with y'all said, and then it's going to be confirmed. You have something, Aki Husha? Nah, this is JJ again. What's up, man? Shalom. But uh, when you were talking about Balaam, so in the scriptures, when he said the false nevi spoke of their own heart and of their own mouth, those were people of Yasharel. And yeah. so when you said Balaam, I was reading in Yasher and I ran into the fact that uh, it kept saying Balaam's, Balaam, son of Beor. And I was like, well, who is Beor? Then if you go back, Beor is the son of Laban. So here you have. Balaam and Moshe being cousins. So, like, uh, I remember my, me and my mom were like, uh, my mom and my brothers were talking about just the fact of the division starting. Mm -hmm. And then it made me think of like the Ruach, and then he said the sword of the Ruach. And then the letters of the sword was Chet, Resh, Bet, that's Herod, but you have the wall begins at the house. And then you have Ruach, Resh, Wow, Chet, 
beginning the beginning to secure the division. So the wall begins at the house, beginning to secure the separation, the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. And it was just uh, like Yahuwah was putting it on my heart to warn the people that like, it's not going to be just the Gentiles coming at us saying, oh, I'm Mashiach. It could be very well our own people or even those who are of Abram. Yep. And that was the main thing that warning Mashiach gave when he says that um, that uh, that it should be false prophets that um, that will be among you, even uh, among among them. And he was saying that, and it came from them, from their own. That's why you got to walk circumspect. I can't respond. Hold on, uh, AJ. Hold on for that. I got now. I don't know what's going on, but uh, either you out of space or something. <laughs> Is he I'm still trying not to laugh, but it keeps sounding like that Charlie Brown wobble, wobble, wobble. wobble. Yeah. <laughs> the the teacher. Come on, I. Let's hear you, man. Let's hear you. What say you? He probably have to uh, go out and crack in. I don't know. He ain't been this bad in a long time. And um, I'll, I'll go to Andrea. If you want to, you can go to um, back to um, that that particular question you had. You read um, Romans nine, a few uh, chapters before. It kind of talks about that. What I was saying, like it said, not all Israel is Israel. And then it kind of goes into like showing the the distinction between those that profess and those that are are actually in obedience to God's word and actually obedience on His Son. You said a couple mm -hmm. of chapters before. Yeah, chapter nine. You start there. You can see um, okay. Paul kind of expresses that. Yeah, because. Uh, Anything else? Anybody else has something else? Um, I'm gonna stop the recording here, and then um, if there's anything anybody want to share, um, we can we can kind of talk briefly as well. I'm gonna stop the recording. So Shabbat Shalom to you all on YouTube, and we'll watch this later. And um, told out for tuning in, and praise Yah.